Wesley rabbits. First of all, uh, you will either dispatch them usually with a shotgun, a 2 2 air rifle, or a snare. Has anyone shot bunnies before? Yeah. And you know it's a good shot when they, they do that kind of crazy death leap. They just kind of almost do a backflip. And you hit them right in the brain, and they're out. That's it. It's done. You can relax. If you're taking them with a snare, sometimes you have to do the dirty work yourself and they're not always dead. If you set your snare right, there's a good chance it will be dead when you rock up. Um, I like to set my snares on a slope and I almost actively hunt with them so that I'll lay my snares out inside the woods on a hill and then I'll circle around at dusk when they're out feeding and then I'll run around the back of the field and I know that I, the direction they'll be hitting the snares at so I can get them going downhill. And if it's in a really well used run, they'll hit the snare and they'll actually tumble and the snare goes super tight and they're in a, a real mess, they die super fast that way. But if you're just snaring out in the open fields, um, it's not uncommon to come across just a rabbit uh, looking a bit kind of nervous and scared, wired to a fence, uh, wired to a post. So you're going to have to dispatch it. So I'd suggest that if you are new to it that you go out first time round with someone who's done this before and isn't going to distress the animal, we'll just get in there and just wring its neck and jobs are good. If you are doing it for the first time, instead of getting hands-on, there's two techniques which make life a bit easier. One is a priest, it's a, a start stick for administering the last rites. And it's just a case of you can get hold of it by the haunches, it won't move. A uh, rookie error is to catch the feet. And I was just saying about that death flip when the neck actually breaks everything spasmodically kicks out and they've got very sharp little excavating claws so it's quite easy to actually get an injury and you'll, yeah, if it's your first time you're going to be quite pumped with adrenaline and nervous anyway and you'll totally freak out. Whereas if you catch them by the haunch you get a much better grip and then the legs are free to kick away. So you just basically lift him up, he'll be pretty calm anyways, he'll squirm a bit and he'll be attached to a wire and then just get your stick out and just crack him super hard in the back of the head. Don't fanny around, make it really decisive. I mean, if you actually take the head off, so much the better, at least you know it's completely dead. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, or the other technique is, if you don't have a, a priest, stand on its head and just stand up. Yeah, usually you leave a rabbit head on the ground and two big thighs, it, it'll just go. That's it, done. So it's very humane. It's fairly brutal, but it's very, fairly humane. It's open over in a heartbeat. Yeah. If you're with a more experienced guy, he'll probably approach it quite calmly. He'll scoop under the head, thumb between, and he'll stretch its neck. If you don't think you've got the power, put a hip flexor into it and actually use a leg to do the dirty work if you don't think you've got the, the power in the arms. And you want to kind of ratchet the head back. And the reason the thumb goes between the ears is you can actually feel the spinal cord go under your thumb and then you know it's good it's all done so you've killed your bunny the first thing you do is hold him up and left the liver in point him away from yourself and with your thumb run it firmly down its abdomen so if there's any fluid in the bladder it'll squirt out so that when you go to open him up to paunch him paunching is a fancy word for gutting a bunny you draw a bird and you growl like a deer and you paunch your rabbit you're not going to risk nicking a full bladder and spoiling your meat with uric acid. So you pee your bunny first of all, obviously away from yourself, not that way. And then it's a case of getting the guts out, and if you're checking a bunch of snares, and you've got one or two already, it's a really good idea to punch them and open them up and let the meat cool. It'll keep much better that way, so it's not going to blow up with gas and potentially start rupturing inside. So to punch the rabbit, it's just like picking up the skin in the back of your hand, pick up some skin and with your knife just make a little cut. Old countrymen will actually use the sharp foreclaw of a rabbit that's strong enough to actually just get in there and just break the skin and when you open them up you'll get down to what's called the skirt, which is essentially his abs. This one's already done, so you can see how they've pulled back and cleaned. Then you pinch the skirt, 
you'll put another little cut exactly the same, not deep, you never go digging with your knife. And then when you open it up, you'll see what looks like a sausage factory inside. Extend that cut and then arch his back and just shake him out into the hedge and all the guts will just go blip blip blip. Bunnies are super easy, mammals are super easy to do, birds are more of a pain. Um, but you have to reach inside and pull them out with your hand. But this will all drop out. It is an alimentary canal, so it's attached at two ports. So you will probably have to wrap the esophagus around your finger and just give it a little yank, and then the lower rectum just tear straight out, and that's it. It's done. Then you would um, hawk him. So if you bend the leg back, you can feel the Achilles. And you just run your pocket knife through there, like so. And then you can feed this foot through that cut and it will hang. And you can just hang it off a wire fence. Classically, you would hop two rabbits together facing each other and then just dangle them over a wire and then pick them up on your way home. You sometimes see photos in old books of young fellas out rabbiting. There's like 20 rabbits hanging off one foot. So those Achilles are really strong. They take a lot of weight. So that's, you've uh, punched. Now it's time to turn it into something that looks like you're going to get from the supermarket. So first of all, you want to do some work here. Well, actually, let's get the skin off and we'll get into it. So if you find a spot and just start to work the skin, the skin is attached. It's all all the muscle groups are wrapped up in a substance called fascia. I'm sure you've heard of massages like myofascial release or your plantar fascia in the sole of your foot. Fascia is essentially like cling film. It's just clear stuff that wraps up muscles and holds them together. So if you separate the skin from the fascia, you can just work your way around like so until you end up with a rabbit handbag. The technique I'm going to show you is not for keeping the skin, it's for the for the meat, so it's quick, it's called shirt and trousers. With your knife facing away, you can saw through that, get rid of the fur because we don't want that in the meat when we butcher it. And then your bunny is wearing a shirt and a pair of trousers. Stick your hands down the back of his pants, up the back of his shirt, and pull. Your skin thins at the ankles. So that tears off and leaves a pair of socks. You've got socks on. This is going to cost me so again. Have you, have you got the little ears as well? <laughs> She's got devil ears. <laughs> okay, once you pull the shirt up, you want to bend the elbow and push it back. This gives you access to the crook of the elbow. Once you get a thumb or a finger through, then you can pop a thumb or finger through the opposing way and pull. It's quite tough, this guy. And again, the skin is thinner at the wrist, so it should break quite easily. Same on the other side. <laughs> and then it comes to taking off the head. I'm not a huge fan of him looking at me, so I like to wrap the head up for this bit. Ready? And three turns. Sometimes if you sing Bright Eyes, Makes it feel a little bit better. <laughs> Burning like fire. <laughs> Three turns, oops, and off it comes. So, now it's looking a bit more like something you get in the supermarket. We're still not fully finished, there's a raisin. The liver can come out. You were asking if you can eat any rabbit. So, allegedly you can eat myxomatosis ridden rabbits. I never have, and I don't think I ever will, I just don't like the look of them. And um, before the mucous membranes go all crusty and horrible and the eyes start to go and the nose goes, the liver shoots first, and the liver will be mauve purple and, and marbled with white. It'll be completely shot to bits. 
So that's generally why game dealers leave the liver attached because it gives you a good indication that it's a healthy bunny. And some people like to eat the livers. Personally, I'm not a big fan of eating uh, the liver of small mammals like this, which will be at the end of that herbicide pesticide food chain. If this was a uh, red deer that had lived at 2,000 meters in the highlands and eaten heather tip all his life, then I'd quite happily eat his liver for breakfast. But not on a little. They are filtration organs after all. Also, traditionally, the kidneys are left in. And this goes back to war days. There's um, cats during the First World War especially used to have their um, tails snipped off with pliers and would be sold as rabbit. Uh, the slang for gutter rabbit. And herbivore kidneys are offset, like so. You can see it's staggered. Whereas carnivore kidneys are paired, like our own, side and side. So the kidneys then were traditionally left into that you know you weren't buying a cat. Right. So the kidneys would be here and here for the cat. Again, these are urine filters on something that spends a lot of time eating in fields that get sprayed, so I'm not a huge fan. If I was going oven ready, you guys don't have to do this, but if you're going to roast, you go in through the diaphragm, that gives you access to the thorax, and if you reach up into the thorax, you will pull out the heart, which is fine for eating, because it's a hard working muscle, it's not a filtration unit, that just works hard, it's a bit chewy, but that'll shrivel down to about the size of a garden pea when you throw it in a frying pan. And then you've got the lungs, which are looking nice and healthy until you can smoke. Yeah, and that's it for that bit. So that's one end of the canal, then we come to the other end. So get hold of the powder puff. Little boy or little girl. Little boy. If it's a little boy, make sure you get all of the unit. Give it a quarter turn and apply even gentle traction. Don't yank. And if you're lucky, that happens. And you pull out the lower rectum. If you're unlucky, it pops off and that gets left inside. And if you're not a huge fan of raisins, you have to get them out. And the way you do that is to go from the inside out with a pinky and push down until you can see the end of your finger clean. <laughs> and that will release any raisins or smarties that are hidden in there. So from this point, it's up to you what you're doing with it. Again, if you're oven roasting, you're going to want to get these feet off. And this is pretty much the most dangerous part to you in preparing a small mammal is shattering one of the long bones and spiking your thumb pad. So take a minute when you're taking feet off, articulate the joint, work out the way it wants to go, make sure that your fingers are well clear of the end <coughs> of the long bones, and then, oh, I snapped it, that's fine, and then take it the way it doesn't want to go. You will have to cut the feet. The tendons are super strong. You will never pull a rabbit's foot off. Tendons are as strong as tensile steel. So you, will, you have to cut them, especially in the pull. That's feet away. Same with the back feet. So articulate the joint. It's a bit macabre sometimes because it'll grab you as you flex. You can feel the toes moving and take it the way it doesn't want to go. I like to force the foot back down on itself. You all see misery? Yeah, yeah that's, that's pretty much what you're aiming for. You will end up with little bits of fur, so get those away as well. And exactly the same on this side flex, articulate, work out how it's working, where it's working, and then take it the way it doesn't want to. Who knows the med medical term for the sound of breaking grinding bones? <laughs> Crepitus. Yeah, that's a nice word. Yeah, we can try this on you later if you like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now that's how you would buy a rabbit from a game dealer or from Waitrose or a fancy supermarket this time of year. What do you now do with it? 
You could simply roast it if you just wanted. You could um, stuff the belly cavity, pack it with breadcrumbs, chopped onions, herbs, whatever, and stitch them closed. If we're gonna close them up in this environment, we'll use a root from a non-toxic tree and you can just sew it and that holds it really nicely. But for our purposes today, we're going to joint because we've got a couple of things in mind for these rabbits. One is going to be um, a terrine, which is essentially like a rabbit pate. So we're going to slow cook it in a bain marie so it will steam cook and then we're going to leave them in the stream overnight to, to cool and then we'll basically have a, a creamy, rabbity, garlicky um, pate that we'll chop into tomorrow and that will all be wrapped in smoked bacon to hold it together. So it's very vegetarian, you'll love it. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's, it's literally a meat pie with no pie. Yeah, right. <laughs> And for that, what we will do is we'll use the nicer pieces of meat in the rabbit, and that's the saddle meat, the loins here, the straps. And then the leg meat, there's a lot on the back. What we'll do with that is we're going to turn it into a tom yum soup and have it as a starter, Thai style. So we'll get the, the more chewy thigh meat off, and then to make it really good, we'll uh, finally slice some onions, finally chop some coriander and some garlic and some um, bird's eye chilies. And then we'll get two whacking grit kitchen knives and we'll just tattoo it and just drum it until everything is just a super fine mince and then we'll turn it into rinsey rinsey little meatballs which we'll cook off in a hot and sour soup later. So, when it comes to butchering, first off let's get the saddle away. So come behind the shoulder blades, just like a cheetah they've got floating shoulder blades for that big reach which articulates and works the diaphragm so they don't even have to think about breathing. So the four legs will disappear super quick anyway. You can literally just cut away those floating scalpula. And then using the curved portion of the blade, I usually strangle the knife, come up and just run down the side of the spine. Don't go too deep initially so you're not chunking through ribs. So in two passes, you can see the little strap muscles. So one pass opens it up, and then the second pass you can go a bit deeper. And you'll actually, if you listen, you can hear I'm running on ribs but not hacking through them. That's no, not really damaging my knife, but I'm well through. When I hit the end of the abdomen, then I drop off the ribs and I'm into gut, what used to be gut space. So the ribs run out, then you can push deep. Get to the top of the juncture of the thigh, and then just sweep the knife out in line with the thigh. The nice thing about this is that these are encased in this fascia so that saddle of muscle will lift out super clean. And that's a really nice clean non-chewy rabbit loin. Exactly the same on the other side. Two passes, one, now we're going to go a bit deeper on the ribs, drop on the space, and come out. Lift it out of the fascia sheath. You can see you got shot in the shoulder, a little bit of trauma, but that's fine, that'll cook off. It's just a little bit of blood. Now to free up the back legs, feel for the ball and socket joint, and dislocate it. Pop. You can see this little dimple. That's your press point. Around the anus end, you can <coughs> see these little squidgy bits just here and here. There's a little connection either side of the tail. They are the scent glands. So avoid those. Just leave them attached. It's not a big deal. Some folks munch them, but I'm just not a huge fan of having rabbit <laughs> erogenous scent glands in my dinner. <laughs> and just cut tight to the spine. A couple of times usually gets those away. It's one off and you can see the head of the femur, that nice smooth little ball and socket so you, you know you've dislocated nicely. Exactly the same on this side. In tight to the spine. Just avoid that. And that's away. Depending on taste preference, I will leave that bit attached. Okay, so now the back legs, what do we do with them? I usually, 
articulate, come in behind the knee and hamstring him, so I cut through those tendons. And then on the inner thigh, I'll take, reverse my knife and run up the length of the femur. So I'm not damaging my knife, I'm literally just chasing the femur. Then I can get my finger in, pop it round the femur, posing fingers in, and just pop all the meat free of the head of the femur. And that gets rid of a lot of the tendons and chewy stuff. Then it's just a case of getting in behind and freeing that up. So that's all the thigh, so that's quadriceps and hamstrings off. We can have a, a clean up and get little bits of fur and fassy off before we, we prepare them. So this is a wee bit more chewy and stringy and that's why we're going to mince the hell out of it with two big knives. So that'll be cut into smaller chunks and then just minced up with, uh, with chili and coriander and garlic. The calf meat is there if you want it. It's not super fiddly. It's, yeah, I suppose there's a bit there, it's worth it. We're gonna have so much bunny meat. If you don't really want to chop the calves off, you, you're not ending up with a hell of a lot of bang for your buck. Don't worry about it. And same again on this side. So hamstring behind the knee, cut out into space, chase the long bone up to the head of the femur, pop your finger behind the femur, closing finger in, pop the meat off, free it up. Done. And that calf I'm not going to bother with. If you were mega hungry, survival situation, bunny ears, uh, obviously you just throw that in the pot and boil all the meat off it, boil it to death, crack the bones, get into the fatty bone marrow, boil that some more, and keep drinking the broth and just basically cook it till it's gone. Oh. You can even eat the bones once they've been boiled for three or four days, they'll be soft and rubbery. So you can, yeah, keep the whole lot. Again, from a survival context, you may have heard of rabbit starvation. That's when guys were living off snowshoe hares where they'd been snowed into cabins. So they weren't getting to shoot um, moose or bear or something with big vitamin rich fat reserves. And the brain basically needs fat to work effectively. So they died of protein starvation or rabbit starvation because they were lacking the essential fats and bits and minerals that, that you get. Um, what they weren't doing was breaking into the bones, which is what the indigenous people were doing, or eating the brain, which also contains all the fats that you need. So if you had to, that's what you'd do. Smash the bones and eat the brain. Yeah, that's it. That's how you dismantle a rabbit. Any questions? Good. So what I would like is one bowl of strap muscles for the trains, one bowl of thigh meat for the meatballs, for the tom yum, and once all the rabbits are processed, then we'll divvy up jobs and we'll start cutting sticks and making terrines and all sorts of other chaos. Good. Good.